If South Africa and the United States poultry sectors can't strike a deal on export soon, South Africa's vehicle, citrus and wine sectors could be excluded from a preferential trade agreement amounting to billions of rand a year. It's called a GOA. This is tonight. I'm Bruce Whitfield. Tonight we find out why the Americans are so stuck up about our chicken. Join me, Christopher Wood, researcher of economic diplomacy at the South African Institute of International Affairs, and Kevin Lovell, who is the chief executive of the South African Poultry Association. Why is a go so important? Well, to South Africa, it's important because it's got two things that we don't have with our European trade relations. Balanced trade, in fact, exports and imports almost the same, slightly more imports and exports. And we have a lot of manufactured goods, so we're not just exporting raw materials. In total, the, the trade volumes are much less from the US South Africa than EU South Africa, but the EU South Africa one is very skewed. That's its real benefit to South Africa. It has no benefit for chickens. In fact, we're excluded from the US market. They won't let us export mm. to them. Okay, but, but, but why, is, why is chicken a sticking point then? Well, the US has, been, has had anti-dumping duties against, uh, issue, issued against them for the very simple reason that they dump. Now, they don't like that, and they've never tested it in any forum like the WTO. And they're using the back door to try and get around the front door. You, a go is a unilateral trade agreement. Uh, what we do with Europe is, you know, I'll have this and you have that kind mm. of thing. And this is unilateral. It was actually Clinton's gift to Africa. Instead of giving you aid, well, we, they do the still African give aid. The Growth and Opportunity Act. Exactly. Yeah. It will help you trade your way out of poverty, deepen democracy, improve your economies, and you know, all the, the kind of good stuff. And it's been pretty good, hasn't it? Well, for those countries who have the capacity, I met in, in Washington two weeks ago with all the African ambassadors. They were 39 originally, and now 38. Swaziland got booted out. Uh, and, and many of them were saying, well, we don't get any benefit. And that's true. Why don't they get benefit? Because they are so bereft of administrative systems, they yeah. can't make use of the opportunity. So if the US wants to use this to deepen their trade relationships with Africa in general, South Africa in particular, they're going to have to put some effort in afterwards as well. Yeah. Okay, okay, we get on to why the chickens are a sticking point. We're not going to let you off on that particular oh, well, one. Uh, because Chris it keeps me busy. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher Wood, um, how, how good is a goer? It's very good, uh, particularly for South Africa and particularly for those countries, as Kevin said, that have the productive capacity. So a goer removes trade barriers, but trade barriers aren't the only barriers to trade. You also have to have some base level of competitiveness to be able to enter a brutally competitive U.S. market. Uh, so most of the trade that you see is basically based on commodities. The two biggest beneficiaries of a goer are Nigeria and Angola, and I'll give you one guess on what oil. they trade. There it's just oil, that's exactly right. Um, so for the vast majority of countries, it isn't particularly important, but it has a massive potential. Mm. It gives you a, a door to enter this incredibly rich market. And so long as you can give, the, as long as Africa can continue on its development path, it could be something that becomes increasingly important as time progresses. No, Corey Constantia, for example, just uh, recently was named as having the best Chardonnay in the mm. world. 825 producers, 41 countries. Critical Sancho Chardonnay, 2013, best Chardonnay in the world. Mm -hmm. We should be able to take that Chardonnay and get it into American Walmart stores if they could produce enough. Um, <laughs> it might affect the quality. But the threat that is being put onto a goa by the chicken guys mm -hmm. um, limits Critical Sancho's potential of getting its brand out there. No, absolutely. Uh, it is a bit more complicated than that. I, I certainly sympathize with Kevin and with mm. the chicken industry that a lot of the dumping measures do have a very sound logic to them. It's simply based on different markets valuing different pieces of chicken differently. In America, they value white chicken much better than the brown meat, whereas we value the brown meat and therefore we price it higher. So when U.S. chicken enters the South African market, it does look like dumping. Uh, the challenge is that certainly if we were to try and trade chicken protections for a goa, I think that's a bit of an unbalanced trade. We have to get a goa. It's very important for the continent. And certainly we have to find a compromise rather than just making this an either or type mm. of situation. So why is the chicken the sticking point? Well, well I think Christopher raised the, the key point is we know that a go is important to Africa, which is why we've been offering to help. A journalist asked me last week, why are you doing this? I said, no, we've agreed to shoot ourselves in the foot, but not the head. <laughs> and that's really what the dispute is about, is how much pain can we suffer? Because we will shrink. Our market is closed. We can't really export for a range of reasons. Why not? Because the, uh, the Europeans won't let us, the yeah. Americans won't let us, and most other countries in the world. But surely, if we do an ago deal with the Americans, we can send them no, some of our stuff. It's and unilateral. It's not a. Tr okay. It's not a bilateral trade agreement. I can't do Clinton's yeah. accent, neither can I do Monica. But Thank it, goodness it's, for that. Yes, quite. <laughs> it's. Um, 
it was a gift to Africa yeah. and, and a great gift. But, but it's a gift also. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a, a gift that is sort of wrapped up, uh, potentially it could be, well, it could be wrapped up I anthrax. Th I that's mean. where I think the Americans are missing the point, because what the American government is allowing their chicken industry to do is say, South Africa, please choose how you want to shrink your economy. Would you like to shrink with agriculture with chickens or would you like to shrink with motor cars? And tell us which shrinkage you would prefer and then we can renew a goer. Mm -hmm. And, and it's very simple like that. This is not a win-win for South Africa. We can only lose. Where will we lose the least is where this whole debate goes. But if, if a go is so important, how do we lose? We uh, lose because the, either the, the motor car, the, car, the motor car industry, two parts of it. Yeah. You get the, the motor cars, they have a 2.5% trade preference. And at this stage, it's only BMW who are exporting. But that's not to say in the yeah. next 15 years, others might not. And then you have the motor component manufacturers who also get benefits out of that. And there are different benefits for, for them. So would they be as competitive if they had to pay 2.5% or slightly more in the case of the component manufacturers? They would argue not. So they would not be prohibited from exporting. It would just be more expensive yeah. to export. And the same applies for wine, citrus, and various other uh, commodities. But what is central to this is, is a slightly different interpretation of what Christopher said. It's not that they appear to dump. Dumping's not complicated. You have to have... You tell them stuff you don't want, you send it somewhere else. No, well, no, it's not from it's at. It's that before you can have chicken pieces, you have to have a whole chicken. <laughs> and, and therefore, yeah. pieces have to cost more than a whole chicken because there's work in cutting yeah. them up. Now, when I was young, I believed in fairies. I suppose most young, very young children did. And the American accounting model requires a belief in fairies <laughs> because essentially what they say is that in the process of cutting up a whole chicken, the cost disappears. And all of a sudden, whole, uh, leg quarters, the brown meat, yeah. cost less to produce than the white meat. And that's wonderful. I haven't found any fairies yet, but keep looking. <laughs> but they do dump, and that's yeah. their problem. Now, that's not an issue if they don't export. In other words, the, the way that they value commodities is different to the way that you cost them. So if they have a different value for things, fine. When you export the cost, you export problems to us. So that's why we offered to help, because okay. we know that... How, how, how are you helping? Because on well, the we, one we prepared mm. to offer them a volume-based concession. In other words, we, that's the shooting ourselves in the foot that we will give them X thousand tons to come in with our anti uh, dumping duty. They want uh, more, about three times as much as we've paid yeah. off. But isn't this, Christopher, I mean, isn't this looking a gift horse in the mouth? So, so here the Americans are saying, here's a gift, and we say, yeah, we can give us the gift, but uh, I'd like this in the gift, please. Well, I, I would be skeptical of gifts in international relations and in trade politics. <laughs> there always is something to it, and there always is some kind of objective. Mm. Um, I would agree. The, the one thing, I think the World Trade Organization still believes in fairies, unfortunately. Mm. Um, oh. The way in which they calculate these dumping duties is different from the way in which we would use it. Or at least there are two ways that they allow using it, but they would favor the other one. And based on that other method of calculating dumping, the U.S. doesn't look like it's dumping chicken into the South African well, market. I have to disagree mm. there. The, the U.S. Yeah. actually has two different, no, the WTO allows two different methodologies using the company's books of account and then when the books of account are not realistic when they have fairies in them you using a, use a constructed cost model but you have to give good reasons now what's at issue here is the WTO has never ruled on what is good reason the Americans trot out the China case as though it supports them it doesn't mm -hmm. at all okay but, but don't we have a well protected chicken industry certainly no. since Rob Davies introduced uh, uh, the restrictions on the ability of the Brazilians and others to dump their chicken bits on us we've seen the share prices okay. of sovereign and What's Astral rocket the profitability of Astral trading update recently flying if you'll excuse well, we, the term. We sit, we, we, yeah, chickens don't fly that well and that's probably more like the share price actually but we sit here in, in a stock exchange doing, do, doing yeah. this this interview but uh, I can't speak for why how investors attribute value to shares but what I can speak about is the fundamentals of, of, of markets and the fundamentals of the markets probably don't live up to the expectations of some of the investors, but that's for the investors to determine To figure themselves. out when the share price uh, collapses in a heap. Well, we're not a blacksmith industry yeah. in the sense that the demand is real and the demand will grow. If you look at global consumption, we can easily increase volumes by 50% if disposable incomes allow it. So there's lots of scope for growth. Well, if we allow free trade and we allow the market to determine well, the price rather than supporting free industries. trade. All we have is a problem with unfair trade, and that's what this is all yeah. about. So a go is meant to be a fairer way of, of the U.S. developing its relations with Africa. If you think about how our relations with the EU go, the ex-colonial masters, wherever you are in Africa, they're quite, they're strained, they're difficult. Mm. The, the, the Europe's trying to protect its lifestyle and so it still treats us as a colony in the sense of colonies rather that we have to supply raw materials, not, 
not manufactured goods. Sure. With the U.S., we can reset that relationship, and that's the, what the U.S. government has to sign. It's perfectly understandable that the U.S. Industry, poultry industry would try to do this because it's a cheap one, easy way yeah. to do what they could. They couldn't get their government, and they even said it in Congress last year, to go to the WTO. Their government refused. They asked their government, and their government refused. Then the government refused for pr probably two reasons, but you can choose which one you want to believe in. A, they know they haven't got a chance in hell of winning. <laughs> and the, se the second one is they want to try and develop trade relation, a, a, more, a bilateral trade agreement with us, which well, they did try in the middle 2000s and it, it was suspended indefinitely because yeah. there were too, too much differences between the US and ourselves. Can we do it again? That's the best way to move forward with trade, where you actually have, you've thrashed out the issues. Okay. This, this is not that we're not, we're not that how, does the, how does this pan out? I mean, you look at this stuff all the time. You're looking around the world. You're looking at models. Mm -hmm. You're looking at the way people interact with each other. Do the Americans finally go, you know what? We won't let this stick in our craw. I believe That's so. That's a chicken term, isn't it? Isn't it a craw <laughs> chicken thing? I think it is. It no? is a craw. There we go. Craw. There we go. So I don't think they're going to let this stick in their crawl. I think there is going to be um, some kind of concession made. I think this is primarily a bargaining tool. They know we've got this deadline coming up in September at which we lose access. And they know that the closer we get to that deadline, the steeper these barriers are. And we're getting sweatier and more nervous about Absolutely. This. Yeah. Uh, but the two senators who are opposing this, the two heads of the Senate Chicken Caucus, Chris Coons and Johnny Isaacson, are natural supporters of AGOA. Johnny Isaacson is a big believer in free trade. Uh, Chris Coons has a long record of working towards African development. Neither of them are natural opponents. And so long as we can find some level of concession, some level of compromise, I'm sure there's going to be a deal. Are you giving enough? Yes. What we're giving what is related to what they used to, well, what we're offering is what they used to trade with us, allowing for growth. So we're being fairly realistic. What you should also note is they don't need us, the American chicken, no. if they want us. The, the, their last financial year was their highest ever exports, and that mm. includes the, the Russian ban, which was unplanned for and immediate. And that, this was, that record beat the previous year, which was then the highest. So they have no problem in disposing of their surplus. The U.S. doesn't export chicken, by the way. It disposes of yeah. what it's ma the Americans yeah. do not want to eat. Brazil is a proper exporter. It actually plans to produce more than it needs to eat in order to sell it. So they don't need us. They want us. I can understand why they want us. We're the f in the top 10 importers of chicken in the world, by the way. And it's not a global problem. Yeah. In fact, there are four, f if you call the EU one country, there are four c countries that do over 80% of the mm. exports. We need to wrap it there, I'm afraid, but it's That's been a fascinating right. discussion. September is the big deadline. We'll watch this one with a great deal of interest. Christopher Wood is a researcher of economic diplomacy at the South African Institute of International Affairs. And Kevin Lovell is chief executive of the South African Poultry Association, seeking a compromise on a goer. Thank you for watching. There'll be more tonight, tomorrow. Till then, good night and goodbye.